Welcome to the Home Inspector Marketing Podcast. Now, before we jump into another episode, I wanted to make sure you got this message. This February, February 2024, I am bringing back my legendary business building conference for home inspector business owners. This year, it's going to be called Mission 24, and I want you to be there. Now, we're going to be sharing some of the most incredible, amazing, even better effective strategies and secrets that are working right now. Our business is having its best year ever, and so can yours. And the people that we work with are doing the same thing. So don't wait. Space is going to be limited. In fact, it's most likely going to sell out. Reserve your seat now at coachblueprint.com slash 24. Again, that's coachblueprint.com slash 24. And now, here's the podcast. Hi, this is Mike Crow, and I run a home inspection business. In fact, I've run a couple of home inspection businesses. The true joy for me, though, has been helping literally thousands of home inspectors build really solid home inspection businesses as well. We can help a single man operation be able to do over $300,000 a year, maybe all the way up to $400,000 a year as a single inspector operation. Even better for me is the 80 plus companies that we have helped be able to build million dollar home inspection businesses. I would like to help you be able to do the same thing. Hey, I'm Davey Tyberski. You may know me as America's Chief Profit Officer, and I also have the blessing of being Mike Crow's business partner for the home inspector training business that we run. And today, we again, we have Mr. Mike Crow, who, if you don't already know, is known as the father of home inspector marketing. So Mike, say hello, buddy. Hey, it's great to be here. Davey, thank you so, thank you so much for asking uh for us to take time to do this. It's great. Yeah, this is great. I figured this would be a great topic for all of our listeners and our viewers to really dive in because today's topic is the home inspector checklist, the home inspector checklist. But we're going to have a little curveball for everybody today because you might be thinking this is all about the internal checklist of when you inspect a home. But Mike's going to deliver some additional value today and talk about your home inspector business checklist as well. So with that, Mike, let's go ahead and, and jump in. Let, let's cover the, a few questions around the flow of a home inspection. So let's talk about the flow through the house, like when a home inspector gets there, what is the flow and how does that work? First off, this is exciting because um, I remember when me and my dad started doing home inspections back in 1985 uh, and nobody had a checklist, you know, of what we inspected. And of course, that list has just expanded. Uh, standards of practice didn't even exist back in 1985 uh, for the home inspection business. Now we all take that like granted, you know, like, and and by the way, there's about four or five different standards out there. Texas, where I'm at, has its own standards of practice. Uh, some other states have versions of their own. Most of them flow off of association standards. Uh, InterNACHI is the largest association out there uh, that standards of people use. And your checklist is going to come off of those standards of practice more than anything else. In fact, when I'm coaching on a report blueprint, which I have a whole uh, presentation on and uh, we have available to people, uh, one of the things that I try to teach them is stick as close to the standards as, of practice as possible. The, the, the challenge with that is that all of us, all of us exceed the standards of practice because we all put things in the report. We all look at things that... Um, the standards of practice don't cover yet. But I still remember when my dad was our very first inspector, by the way, when we had licensing come into place, uh, my dad went and finally uh, uh, took the test, um, even though we'd already been inspecting a year or two. Uh, and uh, his license number is 28. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two, eight. All right. Uh, two digit uh, license number. It's a, uh, the mind boggles me. Um, and, um, uh, one of the things that he did was he went and rode with another inspector uh, out there and said, you know, what do we look for? And so they they shared the information with each other of what they look for. And that's that's how the checklist started out there. And you'll see some inspectors say, oh, I inspect 500 plus things. OK, um, ah, it's true. And 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 it really doesn't matter. You know, what matters is how you uh, you flow through the house, how you inspect it, how what you do look at. And making sure that you hit you hit everything uh, that's involved in that. So, 
What comes to mind also is that how important your report is with this. And so I already mentioned report blueprint. One of the top things when I'm traveling the country, I uh, was in Canada not too long ago. I was in Indiana. I was in Florida. I was in California. Um, and so speaking at all those different places on the report writing, one of the things that comes into play is uh, is making sure that your report is set up so that it works for you as your checklist. And back in, gosh, late 80s, in fact, 1988, believe it or not, um, when most people didn't even have personal computers, we were using a personal computer in our van, and I had to create our first uh, inspection report, and that became our checklist. And so uh, the checklist is one of the most powerful things. And so after you've looked at the entire house, you're kind of going through your report piece by piece by piece by piece, and you go, oh, man, I didn't look at the uh, uh, the vent hood over the uh, the oven, or maybe you did, but you don't remember whether it's a recirculating or whether it's you know uh, exiting uh, out to the outside and all of that. Uh, and so that goes back and you go, oh, okay, I need to check that. Oh, and you go through your checklist, you're going through the report and you're going, oh man, I forgot. I haven't looked at the water heater yet. Or I haven't mm -hmm. looked at the water meter to see if any water's running through the meter with everything shut off in the house. Now, honestly, all of us as inspectors, it's one of the things we should look at even as we arrive at the house. Uh, but, you know, sometimes uh, our memory uh, escapes us and we uh, we forget. And so uh, we have to we have to go back and look at that. Is there anything uh, in particular on that checklist, Davey, you think that would be important that uh, we want to focus on? Sure, absolutely. Well, a few things. First is, you know, if people are listening for the first time, you have to realize that, that Mike Crow and his father, like when they started this business, Mike's been at this for a long time. So not only does he have the wisdom of, 30, 40 years, but also he has the ability to see around the corner, as we say. So Mike also uh, speaks around the country and speaks in Canada and a few other countries about home inspections. And he, he's got this ability to see what's around the corner. But before we get to that, Mike, I want to go back to one thing on what are the expectations on the report? Obviously, you know, you and your dad set a very high bar back in the day where you were printing those reports from the actual van. But what are the different expectations today as we record this particular uh, session? I think the most important expectation is making sure that your client knows what you inspect and and what you don't inspect. So uh, what's in, and so, what's in, and what's out of the inspection is real important to make sure. Sure. People so your checklist is really twofold, and we even set it up so that uh, we tell clients right up front, this is something that's inspected, this is something that's not inspected. Now, and and here's your other challenge with that is. You know, in California, they inspect some of those things. In Texas, we don't. Uh, and uh, up north, they inspect some things that you don't see anywhere else. And so uh, it's important to make sure that people know what you inspect and what you don't inspect. So, for instance, in, in a lot of parts of the country, uh, people look at the kitchen cabinets. People look at the uh, sidewalks. They look at uh, the driveway. Uh, in Texas, those are not part of our inspection report. Uh, and um, so it's important, especially when you find out if your client's moving from outside of, you know, your state, maybe into the state is what what it, what was inspected on their house that they just sold that they just assume you're going to inspect. Uh, and so I literally went into our inspection report, for instance, and put in their kitchen cabinets, not inspected, <laughs> you know, but it's a checklist item, right? Uh, and your checklist can help you your report and you use your report as the checklist is to help make sure that you and your client are using the same version of the checklist. Uh, you know, uh, sidewalks, not inspected. Uh, so, but in some, some parts of the country, that's a, a, a normal, a normal thing. Fences, you know, the fence along the backyard, you know, not inspected, not in Texas anyway, but in other parts of the country it is. So it's important to make sure that your checklist not only involves what you what you want to make sure you inspect, but what your client thinks you might be inspecting or and making sure that they, you put them on the same page with you. The other thing I wanted to touch on, Mike, is, is really to over deliver in terms of when you're getting the initial information for the home inspection, right? If you're able to find out where the client, the new homeowner actually lived before, because what you just touched on is very important. For instance, if I uh, came from a different state 
and I bought a house there two years ago, and I know that the inspector walks through every inch and they covered kitchen cabinets. And then they see your inspector here in Texas come through and they don't look. So immediately we got a disconnect and they're thinking you're, you know, you're shortcutting the process. So the, the deliverable for your action item for you as you're listening or watching today is if you can do a little research on where that person came from, and then you'll kind of know what they did and what they might be used to. So you can immediately when you show up and say, hey, where'd you come from before? Like you didn't know. Uh, oh, we actually came from California. Oh, you know, one thing that's different in California is they do this. But what we do in Texas is we do that. This way, right. there's no disconnect between you and the homeowner of like, hey, man, you guys are shortcutting the checklist, so to speak. Well, and that uh, that's incredibly important. And, and you know, when we talk about that, what you just said makes me realize that you really need to have a checklist even for uh, introducing yourself to the client. So when I first started uh, systematizing, and I, I one of the things that I, I focus on is building systems and then training people to follow the systems and then putting resources behind those uh, to make sure that you support those systems. And, and each one of the systems to some degree is a checklist. So we used to have a seven point you know checklist for every introduction. All right, are you ready for this? It's now up to 18 points. So we have an 18 point introduction. Uh, because we want to make sure the client knows this and this and this and this. That might be a great, uh, simple, free report that we could put together for guys at some point. And guys, if that's something you're interested in, hey, leave a comment or leave something and uh, or or reach out to us, and uh, uh, we can we can put a whole thing on the uh, the introduction because the introduction alone uh, is something that we teach every inspector how to say. So, for instance, you know. Everybody knows you're going to ask the question. So is there anything in, in particular that you're concerned about on the house? All right. So, yeah, you know that one. Uh, but what about the other 17 points? You know, uh, when are you going to tell them when they're going to get the report? Are you going to tell them how long it's going to take you to do the inspection? Uh, most inspectors just assume people know, you know, how long it's going to take them to do the inspection. And um, and so you really need a checklist as much for the introduction and and I have put one of those together for our guys, but an introduction as well as the inspection, as well as, by the way, what you do after the inspection. And, uh, you know, I, I heard one guy call that kind of like the uh, before, during, and after. And that's the before, during, and after of the inspection itself. But then you've got, you know, the before in your inspection business, you've got the during, which is your inspection, and then you've got the after, what happens, you know, after you've left the house. And, uh um, you're, you're back at the office. Yeah, that's a good point. It's almost like the key takeaways for you listening or watching is, you know, what is your BDA for each step of the process? So what's your before, what is your during and what's your after for each step of the process? So an initial lead comes in, what's your before, during, after for that new lead. Once you book the inspection, what's your before, during, after for the inspection, um, and, and what's your follow-up afterwards. And then Mike, we could spend another few hours on each of these topics. And, and I think the checklist one is very important because let's transition now into, oh, before we move on, let me, one more quick tip for, for the listeners and the watch, uh, the viewers today. Mike talked about the importance of a checklist, right? But as you grow your inspection business, you don't want to have to have a, a, a training session every time a new person comes on one-on-one. -on -one. So what you could do when you get really good at your checklist is just have somebody follow you with their mobile phone and shoot a video and you just talk to it. First thing I do is I open the uh, the front door and then I go in here and I do this and then I do that and get that on video. This way it's in the can and whenever you bring on other inspectors, they can actually see and uh, you doing an inspection and how you follow your own checklist. So yep. a little bonus, a little bonus that I wanted to throw in there. Oh, it's, a, it's a great bonus. And um, so we do videos like that for our inspectors on a whole, a whole slew of, of different parts. So my kitchen inspection is different than probably 90% of most home inspectors out there. So we record that kitchen inspection. So all of our guys are doing that the way I want it done. Perfect. Perfect. Well, before we transition to the second part of today's uh, discussion, which is the, the checklist for your business, one other quickie, coachblueprint.com. So you can find us at coachblueprint.com. You'll, you'll immediately see where you need to go to find some of the additional resources that Mike talked about. Uh, and you can, you're welcome to join us anytime at one of our mastermind meetings, one of our seminars, and uh, we're doing some other cool stuff too, that we'll talk to you about once you go ahead and sign up for one of our free reports so we can communicate to you. All right, Mike, as we close out today, let's talk a little bit about some of the highlights of 
what's the checklist for a home inspection business? What are some of those things that that our listeners and viewers need to make sure they have in place? Well, you know, one of the most interesting things is people think about when they get into the inspection business, okay, what kind of tools do I need? <laughs> There's another checklist, okay? There should be a whole checklist of tools. And when we're training inspectors, and we do train inspectors locally sometimes, we don't do the schooling. They can go get the schooling anywhere. Uh, but what we teach them is on-the-job training. Uh, and so what tools should you have as a home inspector? And uh, it's not as many as most in, uh, most people would think. But if you don't have the right tool uh, at certain points, then, uh, you know, the job gets a lot tougher. So, uh, and so most inspectors think about, okay, what kind of tools do I need? What kind of report do I need? Uh, you know, uh, some even think about what kind of vehicle they need, uh, which again, we do something completely different than most people out there in the marketplace. The real big thing that uh, I'm surprised about, and one of the reasons that probably I would say 80% of inspectors fail is they don't think about what do I, what kind of checklist do I need to have to make the phone ring? Okay. Uh, and then once yeah. the phone rings, what kind of checklist should you have to make sure that you actually schedule the inspection? So the cool thing is that 50% of everybody that calls you, unless you're chasing them away, will schedule because they need the inspection. And one, you answered the phone, okay? You know, uh, one of the things we always say is AATP, always answer the phone. You'd be surprised at how much of your competition doesn't, which leads me to say, you know, I love my competition. Half of my competition, probably 70, 80% of my competition doesn't even answer the phone. And of course, we make sure we have someone answering the phone literally uh, almost all the business hours plus, you know, out there. But, you know, what do you do to make the phone ring? That's a checklist, right? What do you do to once the phone rings to make sure that you schedule it and everything? Uh, and then, of course, you've got the inspection. And then after the inspection, what do you do to make sure that... Um, uh, the customer gets the report, understands the report, and and um, how do you mitigate any issues they have with the house versus the report? And how, how do you maybe mitigate that before that even happens? You know, I like to joke with people a little bit, and uh, I'm serious that, you know, if you tell them it's going to happen at the time of the inspection, it's an explanation. If you tell them after they move in and they have a problem, it's an excuse, Okay. And um, you have to make sure that you tell folks, you know, when you turn that on uh, the first time during the winter, uh, you're going to get a smell and they're going to go, whoa, why? You know, but if you don't tell them that and the first time they turn their heat on for the winter time and they have that smell um, and, and they think, oh, man, you must have missed something, My, you know, and you're getting a phone call. And how do you what kind of system, what kind of checklist do you have for calls like that? Um, and uh, you know, I always think it's funny because single man inspectors, even operations that are one to three inspectors, they get basically no phone calls because one to three inspectors are a little bit tighter on what they deliver and everything. But something happens as you get as a bigger company. And even though your inspectors are really good, you still get phone calls. You get a lot more phone calls than you ever did before. We literally have people that uh, are there to answer those phone calls and make sure that the people understand. 90 plus percent of our phone calls, we explain over the phone. But that other 10%, we have to go out, we have to take a look at it, we have to explain it to them again. And you know what? Uh, we have humans for inspectors, and so we're just not perfect. Uh, we do make some mistakes sometimes. What's your checklist for handling a mistake? So you've got all these checklists, kind of like you said, the before, the during, and the after. And most people don't realize how important the before is. What is your checklist for making the phone ring? And most people think, oh, well, I'll visit some real estate offices and put, and by the way, it used to be this easy 30 years ago. I'll just go put a business card in every real estate agent slot. Used to be that easy, okay? Um, and of course, uh, it's a little bit more complicated uh, nowadays. And by the way, most home inspectors will visit a, a real estate office maybe the good guys will visit a real estate office once a month, right? Uh, and uh, it's a little more complicated than that. You really you really want to make sure you have a certain number of offices and you have a certain routine of going in and out of every office, a system, a checklist, and making sure that those agents know who you are. Oh, you want to know something fun? Guess what everybody is saying about real estate offices today? Dun, da, da, da. The agents aren't there. <laughs> 
You know, I, I find this humorous. If I told you, Davey, that your car has four tires today, what would you say about cars that were invented 100 years, uh, 50 years ago? I don't know. I think it's the same old, same old. Yeah, they have tires then too, right? So one of the funnest things that I think is how people want to talk about something as if it's new information. Oh, the agents aren't in the office. Well, I've been doing this for, you know, since 1985. So that's getting getting on up there a little bit. Um, and uh, the funny thing is the agents were never in the offices. They were never, good agents never sit at the offices, okay? They come in, they pick up their mail, they go to a meeting, uh, they grab a free lunch sometimes, whatever, you know, and then they're back out selling real estate. But people go, oh, marketing to the real estate offices? Oh, that's that's a waste of time because agents aren't in the office anymore. They were never in the office. Uh, and so what's your checklist of walking into an office and making sure that people know who you are and different things? And of course, we have our whole Big Bang marketing system that I developed like 20 plus years ago, 30 years ago, it seems like now. Um, and the funny thing is, well, people go, well, that doesn't work anymore. Um, no, it works because I'm doing it in my business every single day here. We and have and our, people out our, there. Private, our private coaching members are always talking about big bang marketing. And they're uh, always talking about it. And, and so, hey, you know, as you say, man, we, we love the competition because they love the competition. big bang marketing. That's right. Oh, and, and, and by the way, you know, the internet did not exist when um, uh, we started our business back in 1985. However, as soon as the real, as soon as the internet came into play, um, we took a lot of our marketing and moved it online. And as online becomes more sophisticated with Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all the other social medias out there, we have taken our marketing and split it into those as well. Um, and we've actually taken the Big Bang marketing online and it is it's crushed it. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of people were couldn't market at all. Our business soared. We had our best year ever during the year of the pandemic, okay? Now, uh, we've had really good years after that, but we had our best year ever. And I know it's because my competition didn't know how to market at all, okay? The good news is with our Big Bang Marketing, um, you know, over last year, uh, we're up we're up well over 10% over last year. Now, keep in mind, we're running almost a $3 million business, right? So that means I'm up like $240,000 over last year. Because if we did like 2.4 at this point in time, uh, when we're doing this recording, um, and the average home inspector doesn't even do $240,000, you know? Uh, but it's because of like the checklist that we put in place for the Big Bang Marketing and the checklist for um, all of the pieces of that. And then, of course, you have to have inspectors that are doing a great job of delivering the report, like the the introduction. All of our inspectors are tested and trained on doing the same introduction every single time, using the report, going through the checklist, making sure they report on all that each and every time. And then of course, after all that's said and done, we have a checklist of what happens afterwards. Uh, you know, so one of the things, give you one secret here real quick, uh, that most inspectors kind of think about, but most don't do. So we do a day before call, to make sure that the appointment is still good, everybody's still moving forward, and kind of make sure you know they still know what we're looking at and maybe what we're not looking at. It might even be an opportunity to add other inspection types to that. But we also do a day after call, okay? Uh, so we call that DAC, a day after call. So we call and say, hey, did you get your report? Did you understand it? Do you have any questions? That's our checklist there for that. And I will tell you, probably 95% of other home inspection companies, maybe more, don't even make that phone call. But that phone call right there, that is not only great retention and 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 uh, limiting your liability, but it is some of the best marketing that you could possibly do. Oh, absolutely. The old BDA, the after, yeah. the after call is very important. Well, Mike, guess what, man? Time flies when you're having fun. Kind of, we're getting this close was to fun, the end. By the way, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're getting close to uh, the end of the episode. So again, thanks for your listenership. Thanks for your viewership. If you happen to be watching the video on today's topic. And again, I'm Davey Tyberski, America's Chief Profit Officer. And uh, we've been blessed to have Mike Crow, the father of Home Inspector Marketing. But Mike, before we go, let's make sure we close out with our five Fs. And then uh, let's leave them with your famous slogan you've had for many, 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 many years now. 
Well, you know, and people say there's more than five of us, and I go, true, but these are like my high five, you know? Um, and uh, so the number one thing for me is like family. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we understand that having faith, uh, not only in yourself, but in a higher power is, is, is probably one of the most important things to us. And then financial. And if you don't get the financial right, if you don't, I love having you as the chief profit officer, you know, out there, America's chief profit officer, having you out there because without profit, well, none of this really works. Okay. It also uh, does so much for uh, family and, and other people as well. And then of course, fitness, uh, comes into play, making sure that we keep ourselves in shape and uh, that we we have a good life. Uh, and then, of course, fun, you know. And, of course, everybody knows I love to take my family on adventures, whether uh, I took my wife on an amazing trip, uh, you know, to the Antarctica and uh, South America and Japan and Israel and Australia. And, you know, but you got to have fun. You got to truly enjoy life. And then, of course, I like to combine that fun with family. So we do family night. Uh, each week with the, all, of, all of the kids and everything. So the five Fs, family, faith, financial, get that one right, okay? That's what we're really trying to help folks with here as much because when you get that one right, everything else gets easier. And then, of course, fitness and fun. And as I like to tell people, all of this gets easier when you hang around the right people. So guys, be successful and be around those that are successful. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much, Davey. You got it, buddy. See you soon. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you want to increase your number of inspections and make you more per inspection, get more done in less time by utilizing systems, people, and resources, as I've talked about so many times, then improve the overall efficiency and effectiveness in every area of your business, now is the time to go to coachblueprint.com 24. Again, that's coachblueprint.com 24. We are going to have Mission 24, where we're going to be sharing with you some of the most incredible, amazing secrets that are helping my company have its best year ever. And we are running well into the almost the $3 million range. So go reserve your seat now, because this event will sell out, because I priced it for everybody. Make sure you go to coachblueprint.com 24 and get your seat reserved now. Talk to you again soon. Be successful and be around those that are successful.